Let us now welcome to the stage the first of our city council members, Lakewood Council Member Steve Croft. Hello everyone. It's my pleasure to share a little bit with you about today's MC, Ginger Chan. Ginger was born and raised in Los Angeles and graduated from the University of Southern California with a degree in broadcast journalism and political science. She joined the KTLA family in March 2008 as a traffic and news reporter from their helicopter Sky 5. She currently helps commuters steer clear of collisions and construction projects every weekday morning from 4 to 10 a.m. You can also catch Ginger on the radio every weekday morning. She's part of the famous On Air with Ryan Seacrest team at KIS FM, the station where she got her start as an intern while in college. Her career in radio and TV led her from different parts of California to Alabama, where she chased tornadoes and went on her first helicopter ride with a sheriff's department. Ginger is married to former Sky 5 helicopter pilot and reporter Mark Kono. They have a son and a set of twin girls. And it's only fitting when she says that one of the first words her son said was helicopter. <laughs> and last but not least, Lakewood has a special place in Ginger's heart as she worked part-time for our very own Lakewood City TV, covering community events, including the story on the safety of Lakewood Center Mall that results from the cooperation between the mall, the city, and the sheriff's department. In fact, we might have some footage to show you of that right now. For some people, fueling up with vegetable oil may seem like an extreme option. There is another option, gassing up with biodiesel. This biodiesel fueling station in Katahe is only a 15 minute drive away from Lakewood. Five years since Sammy won the rodeo competition, and he showed off why he is considered a favorite at this year's event. And we can tell you this, driving the bus is not as easy as it looks. The big steering wheel alone is a challenge, not to mention the gauges. Lakewood Center, a landmark Southern California shopping destination. Coming up, we'll spend the day at Lakewood Center and show you the many different reasons why this is not only a fun place to shop, but it's also safe for everyone. Ginger, I hope that was a fun trip for you down memory lane. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a very warm Lakewood welcome to our host for this year's Award of Valor Luncheon, Ginger Chan. I did not grow, I guess, from that time I've been here, right? It's not really, oh, and I was gonna say, I, I'm so excited, but then Sheriff Luna sat down and then now I'm super nervous. Um, you know, it's not really memory lane for me because I come to Lakewood many times myself, often um, shopping, looking for um, places to take my kids, whether it's, you know, a doctor's appointment, that kind of thing. So Lakewood is still very near and dear to me. In fact, the brand new, a band teacher at Lakewood High School teaches my daughters the flute, so that's very exciting. And their best friend's grandmother grew up right here in Lakewood, so it is a place that um, I guess in some ways maybe is a second or third home. And if at times I have to read my notes, you'll have to excuse me because these stories are incredible. I mean, in some ways I wish I did not read the script beforehand because I cannot believe that all of these things took place here in Lakewood. So you are going to be amazed by some of these stories and the heroism that has taken place. I wanna let you know that um, with the expansion of Lakewood Public Safety, the De Public Safety Department, this multi-unit partnership plays a huge role in this special event where Lakewood honors heroism, devotion to duty, and community support for public safety. I'm pleased to play a role in honoring the many brave men and women here today. To help us begin today's program will be an invocation offered by Shannon Stewart of Shannon Stewart Ministry. Following the invocation, Lakewood City Council member Jeff Wood will step forward to direct the Lakewood High School Junior ROTC to present the colors and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So will you please stand for the invocation and remain standing please for the presentation of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance.
Good afternoon, everyone. So as I was driving here today, I was thinking about the idea of the invocation, right? The idea of the invocation is to invoke, to involve. And by definition, it says particularly the involvement of a higher power. Uh, my good friend, our mayor, he says one thing all the time. One community, one family, live, love, Lakewood. And as we think about the people that are being honored and referenced here today, they're people that embody community. The Bible, it says this. The Bible, it says that Jesus and his crew, they went about doing good. Apostle Paul says later in his writings, to do good to all, especially those that are in the community of faith. That's, who, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about people that have put their self-interest aside to do good to their community. That's the blessing. That's the greatest blessing of all, of people that are willing to give of themselves for the benefit and the improvement of others. So with that being said, I'll lead us in a quick prayer, and we'll get this going. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to gather together, to play service before self, uh, to recognize the selfless nature of all whom we encounter. Today, we ask that you bless this event, uh, allow you to be glorified above everything, allow community to be glorified above all, and for that, we're grateful in your name. Amen. Good afternoon. Would the color guard please present the colors? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The color guard may now retreat. Thank you. You may please take your seat. Hello, I am April Johnson, Lakewood's Community Relations Manager. Welcome to our 45th Annual Award of Valor program. Today, we're so fortunate to welcome so many representatives from county public safety agencies, including Lakewood units of the Los Angeles County Fire Department, deputies and volunteers from the Lakewood Sheriff's Station, and representatives from our schools, community organizations, local businesses, and federal, state, and county governments. We're so pleased to have you join us this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, would you now please join me in welcoming to the podium for his remarks about Lakewood's enduring commitment to public safety, our mayor, Ariel Pei. Hello everyone, and thank you for spending this afternoon with some of the finest men and women in Lakewood. Our Award of Valor Luncheon happens every November, and I think it's well-placed in the month of Thanksgiving. Because this event is all about taking time to express thanks and appreciation to those who keep our community just as safe as it can possibly be. Lakewood is fortunate to be protected by two of the world's most expert and well-known public safety agencies, the Los Angeles County Fire Department and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Can I ask every current and retired member of the Los Angeles County Fire Department and Sheriff's Department to please stand so we can all express our thanks and appreciation for your service to our community and our county. We are also fortunate to have 
many residents, community members who volunteer in the cause of keeping Lakewood safe. Can I ask every Lakewood community member who volunteers in the cause of public safety, either with the Sheriff's Department, Fire Department, or Neighborhood Watch, please stand so we can express our appreciation for your service. Today, we're gonna to hear stories of some of these volunteers and public safety professionals who are involved in especially meritorious acts or as being honored for their dedication over many years to the cause of public safety. I wanna talk briefly about a couple of themes that stand out in their stories. One theme, which we've seen a lot in recent years, is how CPR and first aid are vital tools in saving lives throughout our community and any community. The first responders in the room today learn and use these skills as a part of their jobs. But the rest of us, as civilians, should also learn and regularly retrain to stay updated on these skills. You never know when you'll be in a situation where having these skills could enable you to save a life of a loved one, a neighbor, or a complete stranger. To learn how and where you can easily take CPR and first aid classes, including online classes, go to lakewoodcity.org forward slash first aid. Another theme that stands out today is mental health. The growing prevalence of mental health challenges in our nation is something that cannot be ignored. Sadly, over half of Americans who have mental health issues don't ever receive help. Research shows that one of the major reasons is that our healthcare system often makes it difficult to find or see a mental health professional. I'm proud to say that the city of Lakewood is taking steps this year to address this problem in our community. The city has contracted with a mental health care coordination service called Care Solace. Care Solace has 24 seven staffed hotline and website that Lakewood community members can contact to get a list of mental health professionals who accept their insurance and specialize in the issues they are facing. Care Solace will even contact those professionals for you and assist you in setting up an appointment and with total confidentiality, if someone doesn't have mental health insurance, Care Solace will even find free or low cost professional counseling for you. Care Solace is designed to help people get the help they want and need and do it in as quick and a problem free way as possible. So if you or someone you know can benefit from this, please do not hesitate. Get in touch with Care Solace. We have information about Care Solace on our website at lakewoodcity.org. Another theme you will hear today is the growing benefit of video cameras that residents and businesses have installed around their property for protection. Not only do the cameras deter many crimes in the first place, but when crimes occur, it gives the Sheriff's Department a valuable new tool for tracking down criminals. That goes for crimes committed on that property or in a neighbor's property with the cameras catching the criminals or fleeing the scene. I wanna thank nearly 250 residents who took advantage of our city's giving of rebates last year to help them buy video cameras and make their homes and their neighborhood safe after all. The rebate program was part of Lakewood's Neighborhood Safety Enhancement Program, which my city council colleagues and I passed in March last year, that $400,000 boost to public safety, which has been augmented by then, also paid for more deputy sheriff patrol time new security guards to put extra eyes and ears on the streets of Lakewood every night, and more automated license plate reading or Alpers cameras, which have led to the arrest of dozens of criminals in wanted vehicles when they enter Lakewood every year. There are a lot of things we have been known by in the city of Lakewood. Sports Town USA, Tree City USA, Smooth Streets USA, and now, thanks to our network of Alpers cameras, as a city, you don't want to come if you are wanted or a suspect in a vehicle. We're going to hold a contest this year to soon come up with a catchy bumper sticker slogan for that. But the point is, in Lakewood, we work very hard every day to be known inside and outside our city as a community that prioritizes public safety for our residents and our businesses. And we continually look for ways to be safe 
as we possibly can. And we are very fortunate to have some great partners in that effort, including the personnel of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, the Los Angeles County Fire Department, and our city's own Public Safety Department, and hundreds of Lakewood community members who volunteer in the cause of public safety, either directly with the Sheriff's Department or as members of the Neighborhood Watch Group on their block. As I wrap up my comments to all our friends in public safety who protect and serve over our community, here in this room today, those working the streets right now, please know the residents of Lakewood truly appreciate your dedication, your courage, and your hard work. The people of Lakewood will continue to support you, pray for your safety, and be grateful for the commitment, your professionalism, and your community service. And thank you all in the audience for being here today to help us recognize this year's Lakewood's Award of Valor honorees and to show how we appreciate their dedication and service to our community. As I like to end all remarks, we are truly one. One community, one family, live, love, Lakewood. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pei. He's not kidding. You guys take public safety seriously here. Um, I want to, you guys to join me in welcoming Council Member Cassandra Chase. She's going to introduce one of our first keynote speakers today. Here we are. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, you're so quiet. I know you're having lunch, but good afternoon, everyone. There we are. Thank you, Ginger. Um, I have the honor to introduce our first keynote speaker, Los Angeles County Fire Chief Anthony C. Maroney. Chief Maroney was named the 10th Fire Chief in the history of Los Angeles County on February 28th of this year by the Board of Supervisors. He has been a proud member of the Los Angeles County Fire Department for 37 years and a chief level officer for 25 years. He leads one of the largest metropolitan um, emergency services agencies in the United States with 177 fire stations and nearly 5,000 emergency responders and business professionals providing lifeguard, air and wildland, hazardous material and forestry services throughout one of the most geographically diverse uh, counties in our nation. Chief Maroney's career combines broad experience in both emergency and business operations with an extensive list of accomplishments and assignments, including leading and managing the Leadership and Professional Standards Bureau, Emergency Medical Services, East Regional and Central Regional Operations, in addition to special projects and business operations. He has also directly managed routine and complex wildland fires and other significant all-risk incidents. Ladies and gentlemen, now without further ado, please join me in welcoming to the stage, he's already here, <laughs> the Los Angeles County Fire Chief, Anthony C. Maroney. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Chase. And thank you to the city of Lakewood. So good afternoon, honorees, families, friends, and colleagues. On behalf of the County of Los Angeles Board of Supervisors, Chair, and 4th District Supervisor Janice Hahn, thank you, Mayor Pei, Vice Mayor Rogers, members of the City Council, and all of today's sponsors for inviting me and the members of the County of Los Angeles Fire Department to participate in the City of Lakewood's 2023 Valor Awards. It is a privilege for me to be here as we recognize the selfless acts of the City of Lakewood's public safety professionals and community volunteers and for their exceptional heroism and service to the community. These individuals demonstrate the tenets for which our departments stand, protecting lives, the environment, and property for all residents. The city of Lakewood is very dear to our fire department 
as it was the original Fire Department District City. We appreciate the relationship we have built with this community over the years, especially as we celebrate our 100th anniversary. Today is an example of how we all seamlessly collaborate. And each of you do your part to keep the city of Lakewood a safe, healthy, and thriving place to live and to work. The County of Los Angeles Fire Department takes great pride in serving the residents and being part of this community. A community that is strong, dedicated, and responsive to everybody who works here. Our first responders contribute their time, their effort, and their expertise to ensure Lakewood's success and well-being. Our department is proud of this year's honorees, including our very own fire captains, Tim Karp and Edward Turner, firefighters specialist, Adolfo Chanez and Joshua Wilson, and firefighters, Ryan Tobin, Thaddeus Thomas, and Brandon Panera. Every day, our firefighters come to work with one goal in mind, to help the public. We are dedicated to taking care of each of the hometowns that we serve and giving back to the communities in our care. We look forward to our continued partnership with the great city of Lakewood and upholding the tradition of delivering the best care possible to all residents and business owners. To all of our honorees, congratulations and thank you for your selflessness and dedicated service. Your actions serve as an inspiration for each of us to discover our own way of making a positive impact on the lives around us and ensuring our world is a better and safer place to live. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Moroni. <laughs> no, you gotta stay up here. I, I'm with you. You gotta stay up here. You stay up here and then as I'm going to invite to join with us here, uh, Mayor Pei to please return to the stage. And as you are walking up, oh, there you are. Oh, you're sitting at my table. I want to start the narratives because, like I said, these stories are unbelievable. Just before Independence Day in 2023, emergency responders were called to the scene of chaos and destruction, a three-car crash with individuals trapped, presenting a daunting and perilous rescue operation. As firefighters arrived from Lakewood's Fire Station 94, they were confronted with a scene that required swift and decisive action. Amidst the wreckage, one of the vehicle's rear was crushed into the front passenger area, trapping the driver. Her lower extremities were immobilized, caught between the wreckage and the brake pedals. She suffered significant blunt force trauma that led to cardiac arrest. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, the firefighters quickly requested additional help. Battalion Chief Nine led the charge with engine number 94, squad 30, and quint 30. Their coordinated approach ensured that each role was executed with precision and focus. The driver of the severely damaged vehicle remained trapped for more than 15 minutes, her condition deteriorating rapidly. The firefighters remained resolute, not only extricating and treating the driver of the one vehicle, but simultaneously tending to the other injured parties. The spirit of collaboration was evident in every action taken by the firefighters, and one by one, they were able to transport the victims to Long Beach Memorial Hospital, a critical step that significantly improved their chances of survival. For performing extraordinary acts of bravery in the face of a devastating multi-car crash, and I get choked up because I cover traffic, but I see things that don't compare to what you guys see, and yet in two weeks we had five fatalities, so I understand how challenging this can be. Again, for performing extraordinary acts of bravery in the face of a devastating multi-car crash with life-threatening injuries, the City of Lakewood is proud to present the Award of Valor to Captain Tim Karp, Firefighter Specialist Adolfo Chanez, Firefighters Thaddeus Thomas, and Ryan Tobin. I think a situation like this is definitely more common than we think. When the clock is ticking and you're in a serious situation like this, what goes through your mind? Um, whoever, 
We're going to have this available, right, to have them speak? Yes, okay. What, do you want to answer that? Yes, in a serious instance like that, uh, time is not on our side. So getting enough resources and personnel to the scene and uh, determining what needs to get done is uh, critical to uh, save those patients and get them out of the wreckage. Thank you. Anybody else want to share there? You guys want to be heroes on the side? And <laughs> we thank you so much for the example that you're setting for us. On a Friday afternoon in fall of 2022, one of Lakewood's longtime contractors, Dwayne Swallow, looked out of his office window at the Burns Community Center and noticed a man stealing his truck's catalytic converter. Dwayne rushed to confront him and another suspect. The man jumped into a car and nearly hit Dwayne as they sped away. During this time, Lakewood Recreation and Community Staff member Jessica Robledo was running behind Dwayne. After the suspects drove away, Dwayne suddenly became unresponsive, collapsing moments later. Through her years as a recreation leader for the city, she had been trained on CPR and knew exactly what to do. A Lakewood resident had been at Burns Community Center as well and saw Jessica performing CPR. He ran over to offer his assistance, and Jessica, now fatigued, asked if he could continue performing CPR. He took over while she called 911 with paramedics arriving minutes later. Though both of them responded immediately to a dire situation in order to help a man in need, sadly, Dwayne succumbed to his medical conditions. For their compassion and quick action in providing CPR to an unconscious man, the city of Lakewood is proud to present the Mayor's Award to Jessica Robledo. <laughs> Jessica, I do have a question for you. Um, obviously, CPR is required in working with the city of Lakewood. Can you just tell us a little bit about um, that experience and how it helped you in this situation? Um, yes. Um, with that situation, it helped me to be able to know. I was when I was talking to 911. I mean, we're used to giving breasts, but they said not to. But still, to keep the beats going and pushing as hard as I could just to try to revive him during that time. Thank you so much for your heroism and for being here today. I'm telling you the stories, right? Okay, these heroes. Captain Tim Karp's journey in firefighting began in 1987 when he became an explorer at Lomitas Fire Station 6. During that same time, he also served with Cal Fire in the county of San Diego as a seasonal firefighter. In 1994, Captain Carp, and it's hard for me to say, not say Captain Kirk, <laughs> became a firefighter trainee with the Los Angeles County Fire Department and has since served the residents of Los Angeles County for over 29 years. Captain Carp's career, his achievements included working and mentoring at-risk youth with a goal of reducing absenteeism and truancy. As a fire inspector, he coordinated with Union Pacific Railroad to reduce fires and property crimes along the rail lines in Rancho Dominguez and Carson. He has also worked with local businesses to maintain compliance with the fire code. As a firefighter paramedic, he served as a paramedic preceptor for many years, supervising and instructing paramedic students. Additionally, he collaborated closely with local civic leaders to locate old buildings slated for demolition and use them for department training. He also worked with the department training section to develop videos on utilizing alternative water sources during major earthquakes. For almost three years, Captain Carp has proudly served the residents of Lakewood Fire Station 94. He routinely coordinates with Lakewood Sheriff's deputies and attends their morning briefings to enhance the teamwork between the two key organizations involved with public safety in Lakewood. He also coordinates infant and child CPR training and improves the life-saving skills of deputies and staff in Lakewood. For over 20 years, Captain Carp has been an active member of the Firefighter Association Board, including serving as a president and secretary at home. He is a dedicated husband and to his wife and a loving father to his daughter, Lucy. With his work ethic and strong values, Captain Carp is a true representative of the professionalism and dedication to duty that is well known throughout fire service. 
for his nearly three decades as a dedicated public servant to the residents of Los Angeles County and his excellent public work here in Lakewood, the City of Lakewood is honored to present the Distinguished Service Award to Captain Tim Carp. Congratulations. You started as an explorer. Um, some words to the youth and was being a firefighter always your dream? Or did you want to be like a news reporter maybe? <laughs> so yes, I did want to be a firefighter since a young age and uh, you know, walking into station six and uh, talking to the firefighters there and saying I wanted to be an explorer. They said, well, we, we meet once a month, come back next month and uh, if you stick around, we'll see where things go. And uh, they've gone really well. So that was, <laughs> that was the right decision. And I've been mentored by a lot of good people over the years. And uh, now I'm mentoring people. So That's it's been awesome. a good career. Yes, great. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. On January 13th, James Burkett received Stop the Bleed training at Cal State Long Beach. His skills would be put to the test almost immediately. That evening, while on a bike ride, James and his wife stumbled on a man who was also riding his bike with his wife, but had been struck by a hit and run driver. His foot was bleeding profusely. James applied pressure with his shirt and tried to control the bleeding until paramedics arrived. The victim's wife had been on hold with 911, so she and James's wife walked to a nearby fire station for help. Their personnel attended to the injured man. Thanks to his training earlier that same day, James remained calm in treating the bicyclist and assisting him in his time of need. For stopping to provide medical attention to a victim of a hit and run, the city of Lakewood is pleased to present the Mayor's Award to James Burkett. Congratulations, James. The timing was unbelievable. I mean, you were there at the right place at the right time. Um, what prompted you to take that training and then what went through your mind when you saw it? I mean, you could have gone the other way, you know? <laughs> um, I work at a medical center at Long Beach State, so I sit in on all these trainings. And I'm an IT guy, so normally I'm, I'm sitting in the back and I'm just uh, absorbing it. And this time I happen to be sitting in the front row just taking it all in. And um, I just saw Tim laying on the ground there, and, and I just did what I thought uh, anybody else would have done in that situation, a system. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your for doing that because we know nowadays it can be scary to respond to something when you're not sure and you don't have backup. Absolutely. Unless you had, well, you had your wife. Yes. <laughs> yes She's did. your backup. Yes, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you. Late in the afternoon, last December, a senior citizen driving his minivan along Delamo Boulevard in Lakewood experienced a medical emergency. He then lost consciousness, but his foot remained on the accelerator. The vehicle swerved out of the lane and collided with another car on the street, but it continued advancing until it hit a tree on the curb. At this point, Kenny De Molina, an employee of Lakewood's trash contractor, EDCO, was driving his work vehicle down to Lomo Boulevard when he noticed the car facing the wrong way with flames coming out of it. Kennedy quickly pulled over, grabbed his fire extinguisher, and ran across the busy street to reach the car and put out the flames. Kennedy remained at the scene with the unconscious driver until deputy sheriffs and firefighters arrived. For taking immediate measures in a precarious situation to extinguish a fire that threatened a vulnerable individual, the city of Lakewood is pleased to present the mayor's award to Kennedy Molina. Congratulations. A fire for those who, you know, you drive by one, they, they get put out fairly quickly, thanks to, of course, uh, the heroes here today, as well as CHP. But in your case, it was a little bit different. What was running through your mind when you saw that fire in the car? Uh, it came down to if that was me, would I want help? You know, and take action after that. And at the end of the day, my family or myself was in that situation. Would I want help? And the answer is yes, and I was there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ed, uh, Lakewood, for letting us serve you. Thank you. If that was me, I would want help. I like that. Not long after 1 a.m. on July 2nd, L.A. County firefighters at Station 94 arrived to the scene of a residential structure fire in Lakewood. What they encountered was a testament to the unpredictable nature of their profession. A single-story family residence, its roof shrouded in billowing smoke. 
Their coordinated response was led by the captain of Engine 30, who assumed command, ensuring every action was strategically executed. With Engine 30 securing a vital water supply and Engine 94 engaging in fire attack, their efforts demonstrated a level of coordination born from years of training and camaraderie. Engine 30's captain was in charge as Engine 94's firefighters plunged into the blaze. Engine 30's firefighting crew secured the scene and with a steady stream of water creating a barrier against the flames. Guided by their captain, the crew of Engine 94 confronted the inferno head on. Simultaneously, Engine 34 executed a primary search for anyone in the home. That alone is such a challenging feat, right? Quint 30 venturing onto the roof assess for extension and potential roof compromise, something that we see all the time on KTLA, going into defensive mode, roof collapse, ventilating the roof, that kind of thing. Engine 35's role in shutting off utilities and standing ready as a rapid intervention crew underscored their readiness for any eventuality. Even as the flame subsided, the team of firefighters meticulously ensured that every ember was extinguished, even salvaging personal possessions for the homeowners. For demonstrating the true essence of the firefighting profession, courage, unity, unwavering commitment to the safety of our community, the City of Lakewood is honored to present the Award of Valor to members of Lakewood Fire Station 94, including Captain Edward Turner, Firefighter Specialist Joshua Wilson, and Firefighter Brandon Panera. <laughs> Whoever wants to step up to the mic, congratulations, gentlemen. But obviously, in a situation like that, there are multiple stations, a lot of agencies that are involved, maybe for us to understand how you can coordinate an effort like this. Because you know what you guys face on a daily basis, we can't even dream of. Absolutely, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Just wanted to say really quick, communication on the fire ground ends up going on the wayside immediately just because it's just from water hitting the radio, just you gotta make the best of it, be patient, anticipate. Um, I'd say ultimately why I'm, I'm up here, our crew was doing a search, communicating with fire attack and with a, with a truck company, there was, a, the house was gonna flash. I, as a captain, already knew the homeowner was outside, so as we're coming in. So with that, um, communication was key there. Uh, we prevented flash over. We had uh, some a firefighter bring a hose line from exterior through a window. It brought the smoke down, brought the heat down, and that's why we're, we're all three of us standing up here today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. About two weeks before Christmas last year, the center, where we are now, right, was bustling with three evening events happening simultaneously. Center staff, they were busy at work. Around 7.30 in the evening, the City of Lakewood employee, Richard Smith, returned from a break saying that he did not feel well. After all three events ended, a city employee who had been putting stuff into storage with Richard ran into the lobby saying that Richard had fainted. Community services leader Natalie Macias grabbed a water bottle for Richard while the other employee called 911. Richard was laying on the ground face up near an employee entrance as Natalie checked his vitals. He was unresponsive but breathing. The 911 operator said to start CPR. Natalie started chest compressions and after the first cycle there was no response from Richard. After the third cycle Richard gasped twice, three or four more cycles of CPR and more gasping by Richard. Paramedics arrived on scene and started AED on Richard while they were obtaining medical information from center staff. Richard had a heartbeat but couldn't breathe on his own. He was transported to Lakewood Regional Medical Center. Sadly, while it appeared he would make a recovery from his heart attack, Richard ultimately passed away. This was devastating for his family and the many co-workers who loved him for his incredible work ethic and good-natured personality. Natalie's CPR training and persistence factored in giving a few more days to Richard's family, a chance to say goodbye. For performing multiple cycles of CPR in the hopes of reviving an unresponsive colleague, the City of Lakewood is honored to present the Mayor's Award to Natalie Messia.
I heard your story before I read the script, so you would think I would be more composed, but <laughs> um, must be difficult to relive this. Maybe you could tell us, I mean, you obviously had some training in CPR. What was going through your mind? Um, I think what stands out and will always stick with me is that he um, apologized for taking a break mm -hmm. because he had chest pain. And so I was like, well, are you okay? But he was like, oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I just needed a little break. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna go to the doctor as soon as my insurance kicks in, in January. And this was December. And like an hour later, and like a hundred feet away, he had his heart attack. And so I think the biggest message that we could take away from that is just to never take your health for granted and to like always check in on yourself and, and not wait for when insurance kicks in, you know, just go, like find a place to go. You gave his family the gift of time, and that is so critical. And so because of that, um, we'd like to invite one of Richard's daughters here, Jennifer Smith, to say a few words. not to cry. <laughs> um, hi everyone, my name is Jen Schmidt and I'm one of Richard's three children. Um, I'm no stranger to this event, I'm typically over there, um, but this time I have the, the honor to recognize the hero standing behind me and share my dad's story. On Monday, December 12th, my family and I's lives changed forever, but also the lives of my dad's co-workers who were all here working in this very building that night. I want to take a moment to thank the entire center staff for caring for my dad during this time of his critical need. I am truly sorry that you all had to endure a distressing incident such as this. I also wanna thank Lorraine, my dad's supervisor, and an old friend of mine for her composed demeanor in the real-time communication of my dad's heart attack during the time that I needed calmness the most. I also extend my gratitude to the first responders from Station 45 and the Lakewood Sheriff Station who promptly answered the call for assistance. And a special thank you to the firefighters who tirelessly stabilized my dad's condition before his transfer to Lakewood Regional. Often these resp first responders do not witness the lasting impact of their heroic actions on the lives of the affected families beyond that initial call. I wanna extend my deepest gratitude to each and every one of you for the extraordinary care and assistance provided to my dad during this critical time. However, in my eyes and in the eyes of my family, the quintessential hero among us was Natalie. Without hesitation, she promptly initiated CPR before the arrival of medical professionals. Through your selfless actions, Natalie, you allowed him to persevere until arrival of EMS, persist through surgery, and continue the battle to reunite with his family. And man, did that guy fight. My dad had almost every piece of life-sustaining medical equipment connected to him. The doctors consistently told us that he might never regain consciousness. And even if he were to awaken, the potential outcomes included the possibility of paralysis, complete memory loss, impaired speech, vision, almost every impairment you could think of, we were told was a high probability. For those of you who knew my dad, he was a tough man, just like Natalie said. <laughs> um, sometimes a little aggressive, but he always had a giant heart for others. But one thing was for sure, our family was number one priority in his life, and he wasn't gonna stop fighting till he saw us again. So on Tuesday, December 20th, after a week of fighting for his life, every medical equipment was removed, and against all odds, was fully conscious, talking, laughing, making his ridiculous dad jokes and happy to see his family again. We were all only allowed one visitor at, at a time, and I was the first one to see my dad. When I talked him through what had happened to him and I told him that Natalie saved his life, he said, Natalie saved my life, I have to tell her thank you. To which he continued to say that frequently to everyone that visited him that day. <laughs> Another thing he said was I need to go back to work. <laughs> uh, and when I tell you, I almost slapped that man when he told me that. But for those of you who knew my dad also knew that that was very much like him to want to get back to work right away, even after being on life support for a week. Every doctor and nurse was in awe of the miracle that they just witnessed and even told us that he would be home by Christmas. We were all beyond over the moon and couldn't wait to have him home. 
after all of us saw him and said, Our t see you tomorrow's on Wednesday, December 21st at 2.15 a.m., God called my dad home to heaven. Although my dad is no longer with us here on earth, it is due to the hero standing behind me that our family was able to see him alive, to hear his laugh, to see him smile for one final time. Because of Natalie, I had the incredible privilege and the blessing that many other families don't often have the opportunity to receive, which is to have my dad and I's final words to each other be, I love you. I thank God for Natalie, and on behalf of my entire family, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing us that beautiful last day with our amazing, crazy dad, and he would want to thank you too. Thank you guys. And thank you to all the LA County Fire Department personnel and civilians that we've just honored. Thank you, Chief Moroni. You stand, stood a long time. I'm sure you can weather more, but you are allowed to return to your seat for now. And, <laughs> and may the entire Lakewood City Council please come to the stage um, and join Mayor Pay for the next award. We will present Lakewood's newest award of valor, the Bridge Builder Award. In 2020, after the murder of George Floyd, the Lakewood City Council initiated a community dialogue, a process designed to build on all the good in Lakewood and make sure that the community of Lakewood is the safest and most welcoming place it can be for everyone. Hundreds of Lakewood residents took part in the community dialogue over several months, joining the leadership of the city and the Lakewood Sheriff's Station in Zoom town hall meetings and other functions. One of the recommendations from a number of residents and community leaders was the creation of a Bridge Builder Award to present it to individuals, organizations, or programs that create community partnerships, enhance the sense of safety in the city, and to work to ensure that Lakewood is that safe and welcoming place for everyone to live, work, and visit. Last year, the city of Lakewood, in coordination with the cities of Hawaiian Gardens, Signal Hill, won a Measure H Homeless Assistance Grant to create a homeless services liaison position that would serve all three cities and improve outreach and service provision to homeless people in those three communities. The purpose of a homeless services liaison is to connect with people experiencing homelessness, assess their needs, and earn their trust and persuade them to accept services that will best address their situation and help them get off the streets. The position requires a keen understanding of the complexities of homelessness and the ability to find creative solutions for each person the liaison encounters. Adriana Lopez was selected for this role because on her 20 plus years of local government experience in public safety, social services, case management, homeless outreach, and community focused work. During her first full year as the Homeless Services Liaison in Lakewood, which is an arduous task, I'm sure, in many ways, challenging in all cities, Adriana has created numerous positive relationships between people experiencing homelessness, local government, law enforcement, and outreach workers. By fostering trust and accountability with those she serves and works with, Adriana has created many successful stories. Lakewood's new contract for dedicated beds at the Salvation Army's well-regarded shelter in the city of Bell has allowed Adriana to refer multiple individuals there, and she has also worked closely with service providers to connect individuals with housing. In addition, she has assisted families on the verge of becoming homeless by connecting them with various service providers for financial assistance or other help to prevent them from becoming homeless. Adriana has advocated with county agencies, local and regional service providers, and others to bring an increased level of outreach services to Lakewood. She has also established a positive reputation as a caring problem solver among the homeless population as well as a trusted partner with Lakewood City staff, Sheriff's Department personnel, and other professionals who interact with people experiencing homelessness. For her dedicated work creating partnerships and helping the Lakewood community do everything it can to assist people experiencing homelessness and maintain the quality of life in Lakewood for all residents, the Lakewood City Council is proud to honor Adriana Lopez with this year's Bridge Builder Award. Adriana, congratulations. Many cities are challenged by the homeless issue. This, you have done so much work. What motivates you to continue to work with the homeless? Uh, before I answer that question, I would like to thank 
the city council for taking this um, effort and, and creating this position and allowing me to serve the community of Lakewood as well as serving the community, the homeless community with dignity and respect. And I would also like to acknowledge my partnership with Deputy Nowatney. He goes out with me to ensure me, mm -hmm. ensure that I'm safe. And he's also very compassionate. So I wanna thank him. And I'm sorry, I forgot the question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what motivates you? I believe in treating everybody with equality. And I feel like the responsibility that the city council has a, given me is to represent the the residents of Lakewood, but also to represent and give the voice to the people that are out in the community. And like I said, with dignity and respect, and that's what motivates me. Thank you. It's critical, thank you. Thank you. It's been a long time since I did work here, but I do remember our next speaker, Vice Mayor Todd Rogers. He's going to introduce our next keynote speaker, I mean, if you many of you have worked with him a long time ago, ageless. It might be the mustache. I don't know, but you look exactly the same as when I was here like 15 years ago. <laughs> Please. Thank you, Ginger. You are by far my favorite personality <laughs> in TV news. It is my pleasure to introduce the Sheriff of Los Angeles County. Roger G. Luna was elected Los Angeles County Sheriff on November 8th, 2022. One year ago tomorrow. So happy anniversary, Sheriff. One day in advance. He commands the largest Sheriff's Department in the United States with nearly 18,000 budgeted sworn and professional staff. In 2021, Sheriff Luna completed his service as Long Beach Chief of Police, capping a 36-year career at the Long Beach Police Department, the county's second largest police department. As noted in his own LASD biography, growing up in unincorporated East Los Angeles, Sheriff Luna's neighborhood was patrolled by the Sheriff's Department, giving him firsthand examples of good and sometimes bad policing. It's this experience that inspired him to become a peace officer and shaped his philosophy on relationship-based policing, specifically in communities of color. Chief Luna started as a Long Beach Police Department Reserve Officer in 1985 and was promoted within every rank of the department before he was appointed Chief of Police in 2014. As the Chief of Police, he served on the major city's Chiefs Association Executive Board and Homeland Security Committee and on the Police Executive Leadership Institute Mentorship Program. He also received various awards from organizations in Long Beach for his civic leadership and community engagement. Sheriff Luna is a graduate of the FBI's National Executive Institute and National Academy, Harvard University's Program for Senior Executives in State and Local Government, and USC's Delinquency Control Institute. In addition, Sheriff Luna holds a master's degree in public administration from California State University, Long Beach. Ladies and gentlemen, go Beach. Go Cal State Dominguez Hills too, by the way. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me now in welcoming to the stage here in Lakewood for the first time as Sheriff, Los Angeles County Sheriff, Robert Luna. Todd, I'm not used to seeing you out of uniform. <laughs> Before we get started uh, with some of the remarks I'm going to make, uh, if you can indulge me uh, just for a, a moment of silence. Uh, unfortunately, in the last 24 hours, uh, we've lost uh, four uh, members of our Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department um, to suicide, four separate incidences. It's not something that we in public service talk about a lot, but it's an epidemic. And you're gonna hear me talking about it a lot more because I'm tired of this happening. So if we can just bow our heads and just think about our men and women and their families, please.
Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, employee wellness is, is something that we're very much focused on. And uh, uh, as you hear the s incredible stories, you'll see uh, and hear what our men and women do every day, 24-7. Uh, and although the stories you will hear only reflect a very small percentage of what they do every day, because they're the first ones that will tell you it's no big deal. This is what I volunteered to do uh, many years ago. And as I talk about people who volunteer, uh, it does remind me of a story I told last week at another awards banquet where a couple of weeks ago, I was in the city of San Diego uh, for a chief's conference where it was just days uh, after uh, the Hamas attack on Israel. And uh, I'm not sitting here to talk about politics on one side or another, but what I do want to relay to you is that the general that we heard from, who was a general in the Israeli police department, told the story that as this attack was occurring, there were police officers who were fighting back with their sidearms. And at the same time, they were showing us video of these terrorists who entered Israel, uh, all very well armed, uh, with uh, submachine guns, AK-47s, grenades, rocket launchers, even some mounted on the back of trucks with 50 caliber machine guns. Not one police officer ever retreated. Not one police officer ever backed away, even with their sidearms. And they had video of these men and women uh, engaging uh, these suspects. And as he reminded all of us in the room who are in law enforcement, that's what we signed up for. We signed up and, in a sense, put forward a contract when we raised our right hand and said, we are willing to sacrifice our lives for yours, uh, even as bullets were flying their direction. And at the end of the day, 52 of them lost their lives, along with countless community members. Uh, that's not ever separated or counted in the numbers that you hear. But I tell you that story because as you hear the stories of heroism, uh, it will make you reflect, think, hopefully thank the men and women who do this job, uh, who leave their families every day uh, not knowing if they're going to come back. And I see that a lot of our employees are here today. And not only do I want to thank each and every one of you for your commitment, your service, your empathy, just everything you do, but your families as well. Because as hard as your job is, and I still will challenge anybody that being a police officer, a deputy sheriff in today's America's is the toughest job there is out there. The only tougher job there is, is the family member who prays that they come back to them. So as you hear these stories, uh, not only would we like the gratitude, and by the way, when I talk about gratitude, I, I'm not preach. Uh, the, I know my audience. You are Lakewood. And Lakewood, whether it is your elected officials, whether it is your government officials, or the community supports law enforcement through and through. I can tell by the audience that's out here, when I ask the deputies who proudly serve this city, they don't want to leave this place. Why? Because of you. So thank you so much for the love and support that you give our men and women, because God knows they lay it on the line for each and every one of us every day they show up to work and put on this uniform. So God bless all of you for doing what you do, your families, uh, the city of Lakewood, and yes, even our firefighters.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Luna. Of course, you'll remain on stage. Mayor Pei, will you please join us back on stage? And as you're getting up, I want to continue reading because, like I said, these stories are amazing. Um, on a Saturday afternoon in September, and some of you may recall this story, those enjoying the relaxing atmosphere of the Lakewood Center felt like it was just another weekend shopping experience. But in the days leading up to September 23rd, law enforcement became aware of a social media account encouraging civil misconduct at the mall. The posts urged kids to gather and incite chaos so they could go viral on social media. The information was immediately considered a threat against public safety. The Sheriff's Department and the City of Lakewood take social media postings very seriously. On the afternoon of September 23rd, law enforcement and Lakewood's community safety officers, most of whom had just worked Lakewood's Public Safety and, Exp and Emergency Preparedness Expo that morning, met with members of Lakewood Center's security team from Allied Universal Security to put their plan into action. They already had a plan, can you believe that? Lakewood Sky Knight helicopter went airborne early that day to provide an aerial view of the mall property and provide real-time information of the locations of many many of the groups of youth. Within minutes, this multi-unit team observed juveniles, mostly of middle age school, that's my son's age, so I know these <laughs> troublemakers, arriving in droves. The teens, and in some cases, children as young as nine years old, and that's my daughters, oh my goodness, they were being dropped off along the perimeter of the mall property. Teens were also observed getting off buses at stops near the mall. Seemingly at an instant, there were unsupervised kids everywhere. Deputies, Lakewood CSOs, and Allied Universal Security Guards wasted no time. By foot, deputies and security guards tracked groups of kids as they entered the mall, and they were not shy in making their presence known to the youth. Groups were given direct reminders of Lakewood Center's conduct policy and advised that any misconduct or disturbance were grounds for immediate removal. With a heavy presence and stern reminders to behave, most of the kids remained outside the mall. Concurrently, a portion of the multi-unit team patrolled the mall's exterior, keeping watch as youths walked aimlessly around the parking lots. As soon as kids were observed congregating into groups, they were forced by the team to disperse. Many heeded the warnings, but remained on mall property. As the afternoon turned into evening, kids continued to arrive. At one point, two young females got into a physical fight near the target entrance. Although activity inside the mall remained peaceful, the leadership from the Sheriff's Department, city, and mall determined that it would be safest to close the mall early. Now see, that's a bummer if you're trying to shop, right? And you're like, what is happening? All the stores were notified of the decision and the guests were told to leave. All enforcement efforts were focused on the exterior of the mall and surrounding areas. Mutual aid from Cerritos, Norwalk, Pico Rivera Sheriff Stations arrived to support the protection efforts. Overhead, Lakewood Sky Knight helicopter made announcement that the mall was closed and directing the kids to disperse. The kids continued to walk aimlessly everywhere, yelling insults. To the credit of every single deputy, CSO, and security officer, the law enforcement and security personnel remained calmed and composed, despite the kids' antagonistic tactics dampering any opportunity to go viral. By 10 p.m., nearly all of the youth had been removed from the mall property and surrounding commercial areas. Youths were getting back onto public transit, leaving in vehicles and heading away from the mall. It was a long, exhausting day for the dedicated members of the Sheriff's Department, Lakewood Public Safety, and Allied Universal, but their tremendous efforts resulted in a peaceful conclusion to what really could have been a chaotic or dangerous situation. In total, there were approximately 200 juveniles who descended upon the mall property, and there were zero instances of theft, assault, or vandalism. Five children were detained and then released to their parents. While this was an incredible accomplishment, some may wonder why more teens were not detained, and the reason, because the teens' conduct, while disruptive and socially irresponsible, was not criminal. Lately, we have heard a lot about smash and grab robberies, and we've seen them, right? Flash mobs plaguing our communities, but the men and women 
of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Lakewood Public Safety and Allied Universal sent a clear message that socially irresponsible conduct, criminal misconduct, is not welcome in Lakewood. For their incredible collaborative efforts and tireless work in keeping life and property safe under the threat of potential mayhem at the mall, the city of Lakewood is proud to present awards to these three entities. The Award of Valor is presented to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Lakewood Station personnel who are represented today by deputies Taylor Brannigan, Michael Williams, and Captain Dan Holguin. <laughs> the Mayor's Award is presented to the City of Lakewood Public Safety Department personnel represented by Community Safety Specialist Louis Carrion and Sky Knight Helicopter Relief Pilot David Faulkner, who works with my husband and as a colleague. And the Mayor's Award is presented to Lakewood Center and Ally Universal Security Personnel, represented by Dina Henry, Senior Property Manager of Lakewood Center, Mace Rich, and Joseph Gonzalez, Security Manager of Ally Universal Security. Captain Holguin, you may be the expert among greats here, so perhaps you can answer this. Um, something like this, deeply troubling, obviously something we've seen in the past, maybe in even other states, turning to something much more serious. I mean, how do you handle a situation like this and then know that you guys have carried it off so successfully? It, well, it, it, this all relates to social media. Uh, we'd like to let the parents know that, know the ins, ins and outs of the social media on your kid's account. Um, the ages that you did describe was nine to 16, that was the group. Um, to have a social media account, you, there is a minimum age, it's 13. Uh, the uh, hmm. Children's uh, Online uh, Privacy Protection Act, it uh, forbids any uh, website to take, uh, collect data on anyone under 13. So, so no one under 13 should have this account. So again, there's also the associated risk with having the social media accounts. Uh, that is the uh, um, cyberbullying, online harassment, um, the, uh, the illegal activity, the inappropriate content. So I just let the parents know that please monitor your, your, your children's social media account. Um, I think being having a trusting relationship with your children is the best thing. Um, however, just everyone says trust. If you trust, you have to uh, make sure that uh, uh, there's nothing else going on. So just monitor the cell phones. And again, we'll do our part to keep our city safe. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody looks menacing, but I'm scared. <laughs> I don't cause any trouble. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share their experience? Michael no? Williams. Michael Williams. <laughs> no, OK, I don't know. That's you. <laughs> Maybe what went through your mind that day. Um, well, initially, it was our biggest priority was just to keep the shoppers and the staff at Liquid Mall safe and helping them evacuate safely. And then once we accomplished that, we wanted to just keep the property of Liquid Mall safe and we were able to accomplish that as well, so. Thank you guys, thank you so much, thank you. Last June, the City of Lakewood Community Safety Specialist Louis Carrion heard a call dispatch about a male wearing all white clothing, vandalizing a pole, Offending fashionistas, no, I'm kidding. And assigned by Betty Boop Cars. I was just thinking that when I read that. And assigned by Betty Boop Cars in Lakewood. Assigned to graffiti detail, he headed to the scene where he observed the suspect walking westbound on Carson Street, and he radioed to deputy sheriffs who were en route to the location. Louis lost sight of the individual, and deputy sheriff Seth Burgess and a trainee responded to the call. Louis submitted a request for the graffiti to be removed from that Lakewood business. However, Louis was still looking for the suspect and questioned witnesses who were in the area. When he spoke to an employee at the nearby Trade Winds Motel, the employee not only confirmed that he had seen the suspect, but that the suspect was staying at the motel. He just gave up all the information, right? The employee gave Louis the room number along <laughs> with a copy. Oh, that guy was scared. Along with a copy of the suspect's driver's license and five dollars. No, that I made up. <laughs> Which promptly forwarded 
to Deputy Burgess and his trainee. The deputies went to the room and saw the suspect wearing the exact same clothing as he did earlier. The suspect had a can of paint spray, permanent markers, as well as yellow paint in his hand, matching the graffiti on the pole. The suspect was arrested for vandalism, for going above and beyond in his investigation efforts that led to a suspect's arrest for the vandalism of a Lakewood business. The city of Lakewood is proud to present the mayor's award to Louis Carrion. You could have just left it at that, right? And said, okay, you know, I did my job, I submitted it, you know, it's a business. Um, my group in a small business, so it's very important to hear something like this and your heroism. But what really prompted you to go above and beyond? Um, when I responded to the location, uh, I was able to get eyes on the suspect and um, I needed to go down the street a little bit to make an appropriate and safe U-turn. Uh, by the time I came back, I lost um, sight of the suspect, so I made contact with the deputies who had the handle on the report, so instead of uh, staying there, I decided to contact a few businesses and see if I could get lucky, uh, since I had such a good look at the suspect. And as you described, the motel was very uh, helpful in assisting with information that I was able to provide for the deputies and forward over, so I'm just happy we were able to get the suspect. Awesome, great job, thank you so much. Many know Bill Baca as a commissioner of the city of Lakewood for the last 20 years. However, for the past 10 years, he has also been giving back to the community in a different way as a volunteer with the Lakewood Sheriff Station. Bill has volunteered inside the station, but working outside as a volunteer on patrol or uh, VOP. It is his true passion. He thoroughly enjoys being in the field with the deputies and other volunteers. His duties can vary from working park patrol at the city's concerts in the park to doing vacation checks for the residents of Lakewood. He has even been known to get up at 5 a.m. That's not early. <laughs> to deliver the station's laundry and mail all the way up to Santa Clarita. Recently, Bill began to spearhead the project of reestablishing the Sheriff's Department Volunteer Association. This daunting and time-consuming task involves organizing and preparing for meetings that are informative, educational for many other volunteers throughout the county. Bill's drive to reestablish the Volunteer Association shows his tenacity and compassion for his fellow volunteers and the contributions they make to the Sheriff's Department. Since graduating from the department's Volunteer Academy in 2014, Bill has been incredibly engaged with activities and services from the Lakewood Sheriff Station. He has already worked 200 hours so far this year and over 2,100 hours, or a full year's worth of volunteers work since he joined the program. For his 10 years of dedicated service to the residents and public safety professionals of our community, the City of Lakewood is honored to present Bill Baca with a Volunteer on Patrol of the Year Award. <laughs> Volunteering so many hours, giving up your own personal time, I mean, that's not an easy feat. What, what challenges you motivate you to do something like that on your own time? Actually, today, hearing some of these stories from other deputies, fire, yes, even firefighters, <laughs> and civilians, hearing the heroics that they do makes it very easy to go out and do what I want to do. Um, Lakewood is very much based upon community service and volunteerism, and so that helps motivate me even more. And now with renovating the Volunteer Association with our great Sheriff's Department, it's an honor to be able to represent the over 800 volunteers that provided 160,000 hours of volunteerism last year to the county, which came to the savings for the department of over $6 million. That's my motivation and my family, my beautiful wife, Kathy, my um, above average kids. <laughs> <laughs> but they have, I do have a brand new, brand new grandbaby wow. that lives in Lakewood and that inspires me the most. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you want a picture with above average or anything? No? <laughs> Take any pictures? While they're taking the pictures, I'll continue to read. Detective Edward Castro has been a proud member of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for nearly 30 years, starting as a patrol deputy with other cities. After serving Paramount High School as a school deputy, Detective Castro was transferred to the Lakewood Sheriff's Station, where he's been for 20 years. 
Initially assigned to the special assignment team, Detective Castro spent six years assisting the city of Lakewood, tackling quality of life issues within the community. He also served as a mentor to other deputies who were incoming, taking the initiative to train them and ensure they, they were able to excel in their assignment and their career. As a deputy, he handled numerous search warrants that included narcotics, theft, and vandalism. Upon promotion to the Lakewood Station Detective Bureau, where he has worked for almost a decade, Detective Castro has proved to be an important asset as he investigates cases and provides training and mentoring of others. Throughout the various phases of his career, he has been on this stage before as a recipient of Lakewood's Award of Valor many multiple times. With a wealth of knowledge and being a go-to for others in the Sheriff's Department, Detective Castro is respected for his many contributions sharing guidance and investigative techniques. His willingness and dedication toward his cases is widely admired and he is known to use personal time or overtime to handle cases that include emergencies as well as to assist others in the Detective Bureau to ensure they are successful in their cases. For his outstanding service and leadership to the Lakewood community over many years, the City of Lakewood is proud to present Detective Edward Castro with a Distinguished Service Award. <laughs> you served most of your time here in Lakewood, Detective Castro, and you've probably learned a lot about this community. What is it that you have learned that continues to drive you? Thank you, City of Lakewood, first of all. It's my pleasure and honor to be here. Um, but uh, when I'm out driving around uh, in the city, uh, I'm constantly getting approached by the good people of Lakewood who are always thanking me, thanking me for my service. And that's what kind of keeps me going. And also I work with the City of Lakewood, which is a great group of professional men and women. Oh, thank you. It's important, right, to say thank you. Thank you. Last April, Lakewood resident John Peace was driving eastbound on Delamo Boulevard when he saw a white truck crash into a white utility vehicle, continue through the intersection and onto the sidewalk, and then crash into several unoccupied vehicles parked on Delamo Boulevard. While witnessing the damage and destruction taking place, John parked his vehicle and checked on the occupants of the white utility vehicle. However, once he saw the suspect driving off, he ran back to his vehicle and followed the suspect. The car eventually stopped on the side of the railroad tracks at Cherry Street and Delamo Boulevard. John stopped near the suspect's vehicle, walked up and demanded the driver get out of his vehicle. Mm. The driver refused. Other unknown citizens also followed behind and together they helped John pull the driver out of the vehicle. John was able to detain the suspect. The suspect had a strong odor of alcohol and slurred speech. John deduced that the suspect was under the influence of alcohol. Lakewood Sheriff's deputies arrived shortly after multiple calls were made by other residents at both scenes to assist the injured parties and arrest the suspect. For checking on injured victims, then following and detaining a drunk driver who committed a hit and run and who knows what else he could have done, the City of Lakewood is proud to present the Mayor's Award to John Peace. I mean, you don't know what's gonna happen in a situation like that, right? There are so many people now who, you know, are a little bit um, more motivated, say, than others. What drove you to go above and beyond like that? Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the city of Lakewood. Um, I appreciate this, it's a, a fabulous honor. Um, I'm truly humbled. Um, people today in society are so quick to pick up their phones and record something and not get yes. involved. Um, I'm not that person, um, obviously. Uh, when I jumped out of my vehicle and um, I heard the baby in the back of the car screaming, um, this just gut-wrenching cry, and the lady was crying out that she was already hurt and please help me, um, I immediately just ascertained the situation and, and reached, you know, the first person and asked them just to call 911 and I proceeded to go after the guy. Jay Peace, I mean, <laughs> your last name is appropriate. Thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. This past summer, Deputy Brandon Nunez assisted the Lakewood Sky Knight helicopter pilot, Sonny Moliksi, on his evening patrol. 
Once they were airborne, they were alerted to a smash and grab robbery at Kevin Jewelers inside a Lakewood Center mall. Deputy Nunez and Sonny were keeping a watchful eye for the reported vehicle, but had only a minimal description of the suspects. As they were flying just west of Lakewood, they spotted a vehicle driving erratically. Sonny and Deputy Nunez kept their observation of the vehicle, guiding responding deputies to the location of the vehicle. Deputies arrived on scene and attempted to conduct a felony stop. The driver did not stop, and the deputies were engaged in a pursuit. After the chase went through neighboring cities, the suspects ran away. A containment was established, but did not last long, as the three suspects were caught and the merchandise was recovered. Deputies also discovered that the getaway car was an unreported stolen vehicle. For their keen observation, precise tracking, and effective communication and collaboration with ground units that located and detained the suspects of a smash and grab robbery, the city of Lakewood is proud to present Sonny Maliksi with the Mayor's Award, Deputy Brandon Nunez with the Award of Valor. Congratulations. I have some knowledge of being in the helicopter and looking for something, you know, whether it's a fire or something like that. But from your perspective, um, if both of you can speak or either of you, um, what is it like when you're trying to track a suspect? What are you at, like 500 feet, maybe looking if weather's good? Yeah, 500, 500, 500 feet. feet. Yep. Okay, going to be lower than that, right? It's, you know, yeah. it's getting the roofs. Please tell us about the scene and just you know what it's like for you to be up there. Um, as you mentioned, it's everything's a lot smaller on the ground from up there. <laughs> um, so we had a, a description. I, I believe it was a silver vehicle uh, with paper plates. Um, we pretty much estimated the time from the when the call had come out to to where we were at. Um, lasting direction we were able to locate the vehicle um and yeah just communicate with the ground units that's that's the biggest thing is is uh direction of travel knowing what streets you know they're turning onto from up there and uh communicating on basically three radios at once while talking to the pilot <laughs> so it's it was it was a great experience <laughs> thank you I do remember that day, uh, he gets in the helicopter. I usually pick him up at the station and uh, his first words were, are we gonna get into a pursuit today? <laughs> and so that pretty much <laughs> foreshadowed our, our shift and no more than five, 10 minutes, the call came out. And without his keen observation, we would have lost that car because it was already gone. It was headed westbound on South Street and it was, he just saw it, it was just weaving in and out of traffic. and. We didn't have confirmation yet, but he, he said, that's it. That's got to be it, and it matched the description. And I think the hardest part for, as, my, uh, as my, uh, my responsibility is to have his view, his point of view always looking at that target and to keeping that target as we're flying around and also keeping, keeping safe in the air with other aircraft as well. So. Oh, yeah, that's very important. Thank you both. Thank you. And let me just tell you. The newsroom erupts in excitement when there is a pursuit. And sometimes you can hear foul language in the background. It's like, oh, be quiet. So it is, um, you know, something I will say is exciting as long as everybody's okay at the end. As part of the city budget that started in July of 2021, the Lakewood City Council funded a second deputy sheriff dedicated to traffic safety to reduce distracted driving, speeding, running stop signs, and driving under the influence, unsafe driving around schools, and more. Lakewood receives little revenue from traffic tickets. Most of it goes to the state or the court system. Instead, the city of Lakewood pays for two traffic safety deputy sheriffs in order to reduce accidents and keep Lakewood drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists safe. Starting that summer of 2021, Deputy Sheriff Pasquale Massantuano was given the new assignment and has excelled in the role. Lakewood has been truly fortunate to have many outstanding deputies serving the community, and Deputy Mastantuano is no exception. As a multiple recipient of Lakewood Award of Valor recognitions, his most recent performance demonstrates why he is undoubtedly deserving of another. Fast forward to this past summer, the deputy was selected as the Outstanding Officer of the Year Award for his significant contributions towards eliminating impaired drivers from California roadways through enforcement methods, education, prevention at the 2023 Mothers Against Drunk Driving California Law Enforcement Awards event. MAD honors law enforcement officials for their continuous efforts in the enforcement 
and prosecution of people driving under the influence and for holding offenders accountable for their actions. It also recognizes law enforcement for the number of driving under the influence arrests made annually and diligent prosecutors who work hard for victims and victims' rights. Deputy Mastantuano, a Lakewood Special Assignment Officer, has been a force to be reckoned with when it comes to his efforts to stop drunk or impaired drivers within the community. He made 134 arrests for driving under the influence of alcohol and or drugs within the last year, which makes him one of the top DUI enforcement deputies in Los Angeles County. Through the removal of drunk drivers from our streets, the deputy has reduced the likelihood of potentially fatal or catastrophic accidents in Lakewood saving lives, holding those making unwise decisions accountable for their dangerous actions. For his dedication and successful efforts at keeping those under the influence off our streets, the City of Lakewood is proud to present Deputy Pasquale Mastantuano with the Award of Valor. First question, am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Pass that first test. So initially when the script was written, it said that 51 minutes, someone is killed in a drunk driving crash. But I rechecked that, and I understand the stats to be 39 minutes. Is that from your understanding? Yes. Okay. <laughs> See, we are doing very well here. I mean, you've accomplished a lot. Can you tell us uh, what drives you to do this kind of work so well? Uh, I wanted to give a 15-minute a speech, <laughs> but my wife told me I couldn't. So... Uh, basically, it's just very unfair to motorists who are just going about their day, going through an intersection, and just getting wiped out by a drunk driver. Uh, so I wanted there to be an effective way to, as you said, to hold them accountable, the drunk drivers, and not just let them get away with murder, because it's not just a, it's not just a fatality, it's a murder when a drunk driver you know, gets behind the wheel and crashes and kills, kills somebody. So uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of different entities involved in the successful prosecution and apprehension of drunk drivers, uh, all the way from the toxicologists who are actually testing the blood, uh, all the way to where did they actually get the alcohol from? Are they getting it from a bar? Are they getting it from a liquor store? So bringing all that together for the successful prosecution, uh, going back just be before the crash where they were drinking, getting video, the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, they go through and they get all the video of them, every sip they took, hmm. they write a report on it. So it all comes together. I do it because this is where my family lives and I think it would be, it's just unfair not to give, uh, not to give them the prosecution that they deserve in those cases. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it, thank you so much. Think about what he just said though, uh, because every time I talk to him, he talks about the pride he has in being a drug recognition expert. 134 times just this year of how many people could have been involved in a collision with serious consequences, but they were not because he works on the streets of Lakewood and you can be assured that when your family goes out to run an errand, that the chances of a drunk driver or an impaired driver, whatever they're high on, is not gonna occur in this city because of this incredible work this young man has. So another round of applause for him. Deserving a 15 minute long speech. Our next honoree answered a calling when he joined the Lakewood Sheriff's Station volunteer program and has become a very reliable addition to the team in years since. Martin Marty Martinez actually began his volunteer efforts with the LA County Sheriff's Station in 1991 when he joined the volunteer program at the Firestone Station. He continued as a volunteer, moving to the Century Station when it opened in 1994 and then transferred to the Lakewood Station in the early 2000s. With all the time that he's been a volunteer, Marty only retired from LA County Department of Public Works in 2018. Late last year, the Lakewood Sheriff's Station needed additional volunteers to assist with morning administrative duties. 
specifically to hand deliver daily mail to the Hall of Justice, amongst other locations crucial to the operation of Lakewood Station. Though Marty would normally volunteer during evening hours, he went out of his way to adjust his personal schedule to be available in the morning so that he could assist with the mail runs. Marty's favorite part about being a volunteer is having the ability to help the community and he really enjoys working with civilians in the sheriff's organization. Marty has already worked over 200 hours this year and his total volunteer hours at Lakewood Station has exceeded 2,000 hours of his volunteer career, which totals a year of full-time work. Wow. For his dedication and two decades of assistance to the Lakewood Sheriff's Station and the communities it serves, the city of Lakewood is pleased to present Martin Marty Martinez with the award for Station Volunteer of the Year. <laughs> Marty, you have been at other stations before volunteering. What makes being in Lakewood so special? Um, it's just a um, nice, close uh, community, you know, nice, tight community, and um, people are real uh, welcoming and stuff, you know. So that's, that's, you know, they, every time I'm out, they'll uh, say hi to you and thank you and stuff like that. Well, thank you for your volunteer service. Thank you. Thank you so much. One Friday afternoon in January, Deputy Sheriff Nigel Aldalka was flagged down by a woman saying that her daughter Sally had run away. Apparently after an argument, Sally's mother found clothes strewn across Sally's bedroom and a missing suitcase. Though the mom had already searched the house and neighborhood, she could not locate Sally. The deputy initiated a missing persons broadcast to instruct deputy personnel to begin a search. As he was entering her into the system, the deputy received a call stating a young female, approximately 11 years old, was found by a resident, Daryl Hogan, only a few streets away. Through his ring doorbell camera, Daryl saw the young girl walking down his driveway holding a suitcase. He found it suspicious and concerning. He walked outside to find the girl attempting to climb over a fence. He was able to convince her to stay put, as he called the sheriffs. Deputy Aldaco arrived and confirmed the missing child was indeed Sally and reunited her with her mother. For his care and concern over the welfare of a young girl walking alone and preventing a runaway situation, the city of Lakewood is proud to present the Mayor's Award to Daryl Hogan. <laughs> Can't run away from you. What did you say to convince a young girl like that to stick around? Well, first of all, when I saw her, it was obvious to see her, this little, small, scared 11-year-old girl pulling a suitcase through the parking lot, um, going into an open field. So as a single parent myself, and then with my Christian belief at Matthew 22, 39, where it tells us you must love your neighbor as yourself, it just, I didn't even think about it, I just responded. And I went in, as you mentioned, went and talked to her after what she was doing. And as you mentioned, she said, oh, me and my mother had an argument. I'm running away from home. And so my main thing was to convince her to come back and let me try to call the police. So I got her back to the front of my house, sat her down, got her some water. And I tried to explain to her that your mother loves you. I understand you're saying you got into an argument. I get that. But sometimes we as parents, out of fear for our children, you know, we may raise our voice, but because we want the best for them. And so at the same time, I'm thinking, how can I get the police here? How can I get the police here? <laughs> so I was able to get into the house and wake up my uh, adult son, have him call 911, rush back outside to reassure her of the love that her mother had for her, and that if she would just calm down and listen to her mother, even there may be times she don't understand, but know that her parents love her and want the best for her. About that time, the sheriff came, two very nice sheriff, tall sheriff. I even had to look up to him. <laughs> and so keep in mind, Sally's sitting in a chair in the front of my house. And so the sheriff so compassionately stooped down to her level, and that touched me. He stooped down to her level to reassure her uh, that they, we were just looking for you and that um, her parents were looking for her. They comforted her, reunited her uh, with her parents, and. It was just a beautiful sight to see, so we do. We appreciate our local sheriff and all the hard working uh, workers in the Lakewood uh, City for their love and compassion they have for this city, and what a joy to be a part of it. Wow, thank you so much. It's like a 
A movie in that, appreciate it, thank you. This is the 11th year in a row that the city of Lakewood is honoring individuals in the category of BOLO awards. BOLO is the slang term that public safety professionals use to advise colleagues of be on the lookout. Lakewood residents and city employees have taken it to heart. In fact, the phrase, if you see something, say something, is a powerful reminder about spotting anything suspicious from a public safety perspective. This year, once again, we will honor individuals who didn't ignore their spidey senses that something was amiss in their neighborhoods. They called it in. That simple act led to the arrest of several suspects over the past year, and it is a major assist that is appreciated not only by law enforcement, but especially by their Lakewood neighbors and the broader community. We have a few incidents this year where another individual will be receiving an award along with a BOLO honoree, which we will share separately. Right now, we'd like to honor the individuals who saw something and said something which alerted deputy sheriffs and resulted in the arrest or detainment of a suspect. Please join me in welcoming Jeannie Griffith Mormon for reporting a car break-in that led deputies to find suspects who were using stolen cars for their crimes. Would you like to say a few words? No? Yes? Thank you very much. I'm very honored by this. Thank you. Thank you for making the call. On a calm Saturday in Lakewood, Norris Neal was home when he heard a thump outside. Norris went to investigate immediately and opened up his front door to see a man right by his truck in his driveway. Scared the man, ran immediately into the passenger side of an awaiting green SUV and then took off. Norris then watched the ring surveillance video, which showed the suspect had attempted to break into his white commercial van. The attempted vehicle burglary video was posted onto the ring social media feed to alert his neighbors. Meanwhile, Deputy Sheriff Andy Jones was working his shift when he received a notification from Ring with a video posted. Though Deputy Jones is not a Lakewood resident, he presets all his surveillance apps on his personal phone to notify him of Lakewood activity when he's on duty. After watching the footage from the Ring app, Deputy Jones immediately drove in the direction of the crime to search for the suspects in the green SUV. He actually saw them and followed them, conducting a traffic stop when they made an illegal turn. During his investigation of their vehicle, Deputy Jones found a lock punch and other tools used to steal vehicles and catalytic converters. The front passenger also matched the suspect's exact clothing and appearance on the ring video. Both suspects were arrested for attempted vehicle burglary and conspiring to commit a crime, and the passenger was found to be on probation for a previous conviction of stealing cars. For immediately sharing video of suspects attempting a vehicle break-in that led to their apprehension, the city of Lakewood is pleased to present Norris Neal with a BOLO award. <laughs> and for his extraordinary efforts in the surveillance of Lakewood crimes and public safety issues that led to the arrest of suspects, the city of Lakewood is proud to present Deputy Andy Jones with the award of valor. I mean, when I read this, I was like, ooh, this guy's smart. So, Deputy Jones, I mean, what made you think? I mean, because technology, as we you know, heard from social media posts, can be something to law enforcement's advantage. But uh, you were smart in putting this. Tell us a little bit about um, your thought process in using the Ring videos. So it's another tool for us to use. Um, I think I signed up for it about a year and a half ago. You don't need cameras to sign up for it. You can just sign up for it and get notifications. Um, and uh, I think I've gotten about a handful of arrests. Uh, some people don't immediately call 911 when a crime occurs, so, and other times I just recognize a transient that I know that's on the video, and then I go uh, scope out the spots that I know he uh, frequents, so. Very smart, well, thank you. And Mr. Norris, when you learned that, what you uploaded that video, I mean, because many of us have been on ring, what, what did you, what was going through your mind? I mean, hey, it, it worked. Yeah, to wake my wife up to upload it, it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't you, okay. No. That, your so. first thought was to wake up your wife. <laughs> yeah. it, it actually benefited that he didn't know how to upload it because since it took some time, by the time I got it, I was literally exiting the station and I look and I see, hmm, and there it was, so. Perfect timing. Well, thank you, Bo. The stars aligned. Well, stars was, aligned, yeah. yes. Thank you, guys, thank you. Last December, a Lakewood Public Works employee 
Andrew Shad was handling his normal duties when he came across some vandalism at Del Valle Park. Andrew saw the results of someone doing burnouts. You know, that's when a car spins out while in place and then it rips up the turf and damages landscaping. He followed the tire marks to San Martin Park and another park close by where he observed that the turf on these parks were also vandalized with tire markings. Andrew continued to follow the tire marks leading him to a local neighborhood. As he analyzed the cars in the neighborhood, Andrew noticed an SUV with fresh grass and dirt on the tires. He called the Lakewood Sheriff's Station to report what he had observed. Lakewood deputies responded and were able to confirm that the vehicle was indeed involved in the vandalism. The suspect and owner of the vehicle were then arrested and charged with felony vandalism. For his concern and efforts in tracking down the culprit who caused thousands of dollars in damage to several city parks, the city of Lakewood is proud to present Andrew Shad with the Mayor's Award. You know, you could have left it alone. You work in trees, you you know, you work for the city. What m made you say, you know, I I'm gonna do a little bit more here? Uh, well, uh, previous times I, uh, I was a LYS Lakewood Youth Sports uh, coach. And so I coach on those parks as well. Oh, wow. So seeing that was kind of heartbroken, kind of messing our fields up. And another thing is that as an employee, we have to look out for our city, uh, make sure our city uh, is looking very well. So took the benefit of just come upon it and hopefully makes it look good. Thank you. The youth at the parks, definitely thank you. Thank you. The Dave Powell Community Policing Award is presented annually to a deputy who embodies the ideals of community-oriented policing. Lakewood Sheriff's Station Deputy Dave Powell was widely respected for his ability to build bridges in the community, identify needs, and work with various groups and individuals to resolve problems and improve public safety. He also worked to open the lines of communication between the department and Lakewood residents. When Deputy Powell was killed in the line of duty in 2002, the city of Lakewood established this award to recognize those who prioritize approachability in law enforcement and who exemplify dedication to the values of the department. Deputy Sheriff Seth Burgess has been a member of the LA County Sheriff's Department for seven years, but has made very strong and notable contributions in a very short matter of time. Like most of Sheriff's personnel, Deputy Burgess started out his career as a custody deputy for a year at Men's Central Jail and was then assigned to Lakewood Sheriff's Station where he's now been for the past six years. He was first a patrol deputy but then joined the special assignment officer team for the city of Lakewood in which he attended many community events and assisted the city with special assignments to maintain and enhance public safety in Lakewood. Recognized for his ability to communicate with those on his team and the public, Deputy Burgess recently became a field training officer playing an important role in orienting incoming deputies. Deputy Burgess is very community oriented and makes it a priority to talk to residents, community members, getting to know them on the first name basis. And he always finds time in his day to have a quick conversation with those he encounters and is known for checking in on city events while on patrol, ensuring that everyone feels safe. Deputy Burgess also demonstrates compassion for others, including those who are less fortunate and has offered to buy them food even when he has a chance to do so. He's also no less passionate about his work, ensuring he's thorough and leaving no space for mistakes, earning him the respect and gratitude of many Lakewood residents and community members, including the city's crossing guards. Over the years, Deputy Burgess has been a recipient of the Award of Valor for some of his heroic actions, which included helping to save the life of Lakewood's well-known World War II veteran, Sam Sachs, when he was badly injured. He also has numerous arrests of violent suspects under his belt, taking on the bad guys and taking them off the streets. For consistently providing the highest level of public safety service and supporting the objectives of community-oriented policing, the City of Lakewood is proud to honor Deputy Seth Burgess with the Dave Powell Community Policing Award. What you do is so important, but reaching the community and you know engaging them is also critical in your work. How do you go about doing that? Well, first off, I want to say thank you for recognizing me for this award. And uh, a big benefit to staying motivated is working for the city of Lakewood. Out of all the five cities that our station is responsible for, 
Lakewood is easy, easily, hands down, the best city to be patrolling. Thank you so much. And also, I wouldn't be able to do it without my wife. She keeps me motivated every day. Even when I'm having a bad day, she's there to pick me right back up. You want to stand up? <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. On an early evening last April, Southwest Patrol Officer Raymond Navarro from Lakewood's overnight security contractor noticed two suspicious looking males on the corner of Centralia Street and Claretta Avenue. Both were wearing all black clothing and gloves. One had a hoodie on and the other had a black mask that covered the top and bottom of his face. Raymond noticed the one with a mask run behind a white man and heard a loud noise. He made a U-turn, approached the two men who were then had removed their hoodies and masks, allowing Raymond to get a good look at them. He asked them if they lived in the area to which they said yes, on Claretta Avenue. The two men continued walking northbound while Raymond continued down the streets towards Centralia Street, stopping to ask a resident walking his dog if he had noticed any odd behavior from the suspects, and the resident suggested looking by the white van. Upon inspecting the area around the van, Raymond spotted a firearm under the vehicle by the curb. He immediately notified deputy sheriffs, and a deputy was able to find a second firearm under the van. Both were unregistered Rugers that were loaded, one with a round in the chamber. For his keen observation and retrieval of a dangerous firearm quickly disposed of under suspicious circumstances, the city of Lakewood is pleased to present the mayor's award to Raymond Navarro, a Southwest Patrol. Congratulations. Tell us a little bit about when you approached those suspects. Uh, yeah, it was pretty much the end of my patrol. I was just doing the last round when I noticed these individuals walked out of a corner, completely covered in black clothing. So I made contact, uh, but I noticed one of them ran behind of a van and uh, wearing all masked up and everything. It looked like he was holding a pistol. So I ran forward, I drove forward, made a U-turn, and I lit up the area. The individuals came out with nothing on, and uh, thankfully that resident was there. He's truly the unsung hero as well, um, but he did mention to go check it out, and thankfully I was able to recover that firearm. So I'm just glad that I probably prevented somebody from getting shot, robbed, or murdered. All right, thank you so much. A true, what the law enforcement works hand in hand with uh, the community, you have good relationship. Thank you so much. Though Dale Hills has been a neighborhood watch block captain in Lakewood for only a year, he hit the ground running, enhancing his neighborhood and the Lakewood community through crime prevention efforts and emergency preparedness education. Dale has shown enthusiasm and great interest in being a part of the Lakewood community, and he's not one to shy away from dressing the part. He has volunteered to play the role of Santa Claus for Lakewood's Coco with a deputy event and even rearranged his own eye surgery to be available for the event last year. In just one year, he has truly made an impact on his neighbors and the broader public safety community in Lakewood through his involvement with Neighborhood Watch. For his dedication to his community and his fellow residents in crime prevention and emergency preparedness, the city of Lakewood is proud to name Dale Hills as a Neighborhood Watch Block Captain of the Year. The area should be named Dale Hills, if you, if you ask me. That's what, that's what it sounds like, a nice neighborhood area. Um, how long have you been a resident, and you know what inspired you to take on that responsibility as block captain? Well, I'm, I was uh, four years old when I moved to Lakewood. Moved out after high school and some college and bounced around, and then I decided, I want to go back to Lakewood. Been here 35 years. I love it. It's thank you, Lakewood, for making it so possible for us to energize the neighborhood watch program. We encourage people not just to know your neighbor next door, but know them across the street and behind you. And we've we've pulled our neighborhood together, and I think it's much safer. Thank you, Lakewood. Thank you. On a Saturday evening last April, Deputy Sheriff Ruben Gonzalez and, Ortor and Arturo Rubacalba responded to a call about an unresponsive adult male at the Vons on Woodruff and South Street. The man's girlfriend discovered him unresponsive in her vehicle after she finished grocery shopping. Frantic, she called 911 and admitted that her boyfriend could have overdosed on fentanyl. 
she began CPR as instructed by dispatch. When the deputies arrived at the scene, they quickly assessed the man's condition and confirmed that he was not breathing. Based on their experience and training on drug-related incidents, they administered Narcan. Just a few seconds later, the man began breathing, regained consciousness, and was able to talk to deputies. For their quick calculation and immediate action that saved a man's life, the city of Lakewood is pleased to present Deputy Sheriffs Ruben Gonzalez and Arturo Ruvacalba, Ruvacalba with the Award of Valor. Thank you, gentlemen. We know that fentanyl is a crisis, and when you guys respond to a scene like that, that is a scary situation for you because fentanyl is so dangerous. Can you speak about that and about that situation that you responded to? Uh, yeah, inherently those situations are dangerous just because of fentanyl exposure, um, especially when you go into it knowing that that's what's going to be. So we just try to take all the measures we can, uh, glove up, and just keep our eyes on everything. All right. Would you like to say something? No? Okay. No. Thank you guys so much for thank you. your heroism. Thank you. It was the afternoon of Christmas Eve last year, but the good tidings and cheer were not what an elderly female DoorDash delivery driver, Lavoris, experienced in a chance encounter with three men. As she sat in her car looking at the DoorDash app, near Centralia and Palo Verde, a man walked up to her on the driver's side and asked her for money. At the same time, two women approached her passenger side window and threatened to beat her up. As she turned to look at the women, the man pulled open the door to the vehicle and began screaming at her and attempting to steal her vehicle. Lavoris pushed the emergency alert button on her DoorDash app and screamed for help. The suspect had grabbed her arm, placed his foot inside the vehicle while someone tried to open up the passenger side door. Postal Service mail carrier Jesse Ziemdorf saw the three individuals terrorizing the woman and immediately ran towards them, yelling at them to stop. One of the suspects approached him and attempted to hit him with a backpack. Meanwhile, two Good Samaritan brothers driving southbound on Palo Verde heard the DoorDash driver calling for help. One brother jumped out of the vehicle, approached the suspects, trying to stop the attack. The three suspects left, walking westbound on Centralia Street. Moments later, there were cries for help from another woman. While Jesse remained with the first victim, the two brothers ran into the direction of the cries and found all three suspects arguing with a woman on her front lawn. She had been cleaning her garage when the three suspects approached her and demanded her cell phone. The brothers immediately separated the suspects from Kathy. The suspects became combative and tried to flee, but the Good Samaritans were able to place them under citizen's arrest and safely hold them on the ground until the deputies arrived. As a result, two suspects were arrested and charged with attempted carjacking. The third suspect was a 17-year-old minor and legally had to be released to her parents' custody. For bravely coming to the aid of a woman endangered by three car thieves, the city of Lakewood is honored to present the Mayor's Award to Jesse Ziemdorf. The Good Samaritan Brothers wish to remain anonymous, but their contributions were equally appreciated. Um, Jesse, once you got to those suspects, I mean, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind in that scene? Um, that just someone, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I did it, but I just, in my mind, I just thought, like, I really wish that anyone in that circumstance would do what I would say I did and just step up because that's what's really important, especially in these times. And I know a gentleman made a comment about that we live in these times where people are so quick to be on their phones. Right. And, you know, that's, that's so important to do, but it's also important to just, in, in times where you just really have to be there, you have to be there. You have to be present and you have to fight for the right thing and to do the right thing. And that's not always the safest or the, you know, I'll just say it's not the safest thing to do, but in my mind, it's always the right thing to do. It's to fight, especially for your community. And uh, I was raised in Lakewood, and I work in Lakewood. I work at the office, you know, just a few hundred feet away. And in my mind, I just, I thought of as an employee of Lakewood, but first-handedly I thought about as a citizen of Lakewood and that, you know, I would want someone to do 
that for my community because I care about my community and, you know, just always push forward to do the right thing. When community comes together, especially with law enforcement, it's, it's crazy what, what could be done because that's what really keeps the community safe. That's what really keeps the city safe. And that's what's important and dear to me. Thank you. And who knew DoorDash have an alert app, right? Jeez. <laughs> On the evening of July 11th, spirits were high as the Lakewood City Council chambers were packed full of residents and community members excited to watch a new mayor be sworn into office. But one individual was, uh, who was attending the meeting had an ulterior motive. Earlier, Lakewood Executive Secretary Barbara DiOrio had been staffing the registration table at a city event in the center just before the council meeting interacted with the man as he looked for the council chambers. She noted this strange behavior and shared her concern with another staff member who related to Deputy Sheriff Chuck Nowatney, who normally attends city council meetings. The suspect was seated in the chambers, and once the council meeting started, the suspect interrupted the proceedings several times, saying that he should be mayor, that he should be named vice mayor, and then finally asking if the audience wanted him to leave, which they, yes, said, please leave, and they broke out in applause. He exited the council chambers, and newly appointed Mayor Ariel Pei resumed his acceptance speech. But minutes later, from the back of the room, the man returned aggressively shouting and running towards the front of the dais where Mayor Pei and the city council were seated. The man's arms were raised and outstretched. He wore a backpack and the contents were unknown and it appeared that he may be intending to cause physical harm as he rushed towards the council. Seeing the aggressive suspect rapidly approaching Vice Mayor Todd Rogers, Lakewood Sheriff Station Captain Daniel Hogeen, City Manager Thaddeus McCormick and Director of Public Safety Joshua York had ran towards the man in an effort to thwart his potential attack. He made the, took the wrong spot, <laughs> you know, to attack, right? The heckler thrust his arm out and made a brief grab at Mayor Pei's arm, but the four men were able to subdue the man and escorted him into the lobby. Moments before, Lakewood Administrative Assistant Frank Ontiveros had been outside with Deputy Nowatney trying to see where the suspect had gone when someone rushed out to inform them the suspect had returned. Frank reached the lobby as his fellow colleagues burst through the door, wrestling the man who was resisting. Frank sprang into action, wrapping his arms around the torso of the suspect and quickly maneuvering him so he was on the floor. With the suspect down, Captain Holguin handcuffed, handcuffed him while the other men restrained his legs so that he would stop kicking and prevent injury to himself and others. At that point, meeting attendee Demetrius Maranganis had knelt down to also hold the suspect's leg in place to prevent him from getting up or harming others. Moments later, patrol deputies convened into the council chamber lobby, assisting Captain Holguin with the detainment of the suspect and removing him from the building. After deputy sheriffs took the suspect into custody, everyone returned to the council chambers and resumed the council meeting without further incident. Later, law enforcement identified the man as a transient who at some point resided in the community. Lakewood pursued a restraining order against him to prevent any further meeting attendance or disturbance by him. And as far as we know today, that man is now in the state of Oregon. Bye, Felicia, right? <laughs> Can't help but think that. For the swift action in preventing a man from potentially harming Mayor Pei or others at a council meeting, the city of Lakewood is proud to present the award of valor to Captain Daniel Hogeen, the mayor's award to Frank Ontiveros, Thaddeus McCormick, Vice Mayor Todd Rogers, and Joshua Yort, and the Bolo Award to Barbara DiOrio and Demetrius Marvanganis. whomever would like to speak, but I mean, this was definitely a team effort. I'm sure you guys remember it like it was yesterday. Your thoughts? Well, you know, not to be Columbo, but you know, something just didn't seem right. And especially in a community uh, like Lakewood where decorum and civility are really hallmarks, what that gentleman was um, exhibiting just didn't make sense. What does make sense is in a community like Lakewood, 
um, there are people ready and willing to spring into action from, from the vice mayor to our employees to our community. So every day I'm, I'm proud to, to work for this wonderful community, uh, but really never more so than on that day to work with such an incredible group of people and for such an incredible community. Thank you. Well, you must have felt safe, Mayor Pei. Uh, yes. Yeah, you felt yes. safe. Um, thank you guys all for being there and for your heroism as well. Thank you. I mean, who knew all these things happening in Lakewood? My gosh, exciting. On behalf of the Lakewood City Council, I want to thank you all for helping us celebrate the heroism, devotion to duty, community spirit, volunteerism as well. Our honorees have all received the commendations from Lakewood's elected county, state, and federal officials, and we thank them for their support of this program. Once again, I thank you. I'm honored to be here. I was terribly nervous, but more so very excited. So thank you, guys, and congratulations to those who have received these amazing awards.